This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We passed the six-minute mark in our countdown for Apollo 11, the flight to land of the first men on the moon. The swing arm now coming back as our countdown continues. Firing command coming in now. We're on an automatic sequence as the master computer supervises hundreds of events occurring over these last few minutes. T-minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. 6, Once the spacecraft rockets out of Earth orbit, the moon is a three-day journey. The crew is the tip of the iceberg. In Apollo 11, there were 400,000 people underneath that all had to do their job or we weren't going to make it. And I think every crew realized that. It was a team effort of NASA that got us to the moon. These are... Uh probably the finest systems engineers at the world. They're all young. Uh, average age was 26. I was the oldest guy that day. I was 36. Okay, guys, it's now time to get down to business. Uh, we're about ready to land uh, a man on the moon. And uh, I start talking to him because I feel compelled to talk. I was probably the most emotional of the flight directors. From the day of our birth, we were met for this time and place. And today, we will land an American on the moon. Whatever happens here today, I will stand behind every decision you will make. We came into this room as a team, and we will leave as a team. Then I tell my ground controller to lock the control room doors. And from now on, no person will leave or enter this room until we have either landed, we have crashed, or we have aborted. Those are the only three outcomes from this time on. The first thing, obviously, that we're going to have to do is to undock from the command module. Roger, how does it look? Stay in the and then uh, we rotated around so that Mike could sort of make a quick check of our landing gear. Listen, baby, everything's going just swimmingly. Beautiful. Then the first thing we need to do is establish communication with the Earth. Here's the Eagle, how do you read? Bye-bye, Eagle, we're standing by for your burn report, over. Roger, the burn was on time. Tempo in the room picks up right as we acquire spacecraft telemetry and we immediately got problems. X and Z notes. We've got communications problems you cannot believe. Columbia, Houston, we've lost all data with uh, Eagle. Please add in Korea for on a high gain over. We couldn't communicate with the lunar mounts. Eagle, Mike Collins could call. because he could see him. He could point his antennas at him and talk to him. So what we would do is we would say, uh, Mike, have the crew select a different antenna. Houston, we've lost them. Tell them to go ask Omni over. Take uh, Omni Bravo or Omni Delta. Will you roll the spacecraft a little bit for us? He'd roll the spacecraft, we'd get data. Eagle Houston, uh, we recommend uh, y'all 10 right will help us on the uh, high gain signal strength, over. Yeah, you should have now, Houston. Eagle, we got you now. It's looking good, over. And at uh, descent minus five minutes, I give the go for a uh, powered descent. Go to con you go to continue power descent. You're a go to continue power descent. The descent was very tricky business. Our plan was to start about 50,000 feet altitude, 3,000 miles per hour, to use one continuous rocket burn to decelerate to a hover in the landing area. Eagle Houston, everything's looking good here, over. Throttle up. And I get confirmed throttle up, and telemetry drops out again. 
And I'm back in this ground roll. Do I have enough information to continue the descent or not? Okay, all flight controllers, gonna go for landing. Retro, go. Lido, go. Guys, go. Control, go. Telcom, go. GNC, go. Ecom, go. Surgeon, go. Capcom, we're go for landing. Houston, you're go for landing. Over. Program alarm. And about that time, uh, we got a, a computer alarm. Of, 1202. 1202. 1202. The computer was giving us trouble. It was a big attention getter. My first thought, oh no, we've lost it. We're not going to make it. All we had was 1202, which is kind of disconcerting. Uh, you lose information, plus you've got an alarm, and you don't really know what it is. Give us a reading on the 1202 program alarm. I was reaching for my checklist to turn to this program alarm when the guidance guy, Steve Bale, said, we're go, flight on that alarm. Gene took his word, you know, okay, we're go. He didn't ask for explanation, we're go. Roger, we got you, we're going at alarm. Now the landing radar can begin to pick up range and velocity of the ground beneath us, and it compares that with what the uh, computer thinks it ought to be, and there's a big difference. Hold on. Our position check down range to be a little off. Roger, 1201, Well, it's extremely serious. Is the computer breaking? Is it telling us it's not functioning right? 1201, Roger, 1201 alarm. What is the alarm telling us? We're go, same type, we're go. Same type, it was a different number, but same type. He said, same type flight, we're go. 47 degrees, Roger. The computer was so busy, and it couldn't get all the jobs done, so it was dropping off these other little jobs down on the end and not doing them, which were jobs that weren't really that critical. Just as Mission Control decides to ignore the computer alarms, the LEM sends another strange signal. 37 degrees. We just saw this strange trajectory that we'd never seen in training. Standard speed down three and a half, 47 forward. He went down to about 400 feet, stopped his descent, and leveled off and started flying horizontally across the moon. He didn't tell us, but out the window, what they were seeing was a big boulder field. Our computer was steering us toward football stadium-sized craters, surrounded by steep slopes and covered with very large boulders. 50 down at two and a half, 19 forward, altitude, velocity, light. Neil had the one thing we did not have. He had the out-the-window view. 15 forward. He knew whether he was over a safe place to land or over a boulder field. My job was to tell him how much fuel he had. And when it had zero, that was our best knowledge. We had zero. Five and a half down. Nine forward. The fuel states were falling, and we were getting close to what was going to be an abort situation. 100 feet, three and a half down, nine forward. When we got to about 100 feet, the low level light came on, and uh, Charlie Duke gave us a call of 60 seconds. Simple call, Eagle, 60 seconds. 60 seconds. We better get on the ground pretty soon. And he had 60 seconds to land. And after that 60 seconds, it would be a board. Down two and a half. I didn't want to disturb Neil's concentration because I knew he was really working that problem. Two and a half, picking up some dust. And now we crew is kicking up some dust. So we know they're darn close to the surface, but they were scooting pretty fast across it last time we heard. Four forward, drift into the right a little. We used most of our remaining fuel, finding a relatively level and smooth landing spot. And a half. 30 seconds. We had 30 seconds to land. I mean, it was deathly silent. Now, I don't think he was going to actually abort. I mean, that wouldn't have been the right stuff. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. APA had a descent. And I looked over at him, and, and he looked at me. And uh, th there was not a, a great emotion, but there was a, a, a smile, a satisfaction on both of our faces, and we shook hands. 413 is in. We copy you down, Eagle. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twink. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. That you finally can say, we just landed in the moon. We hit the moon with 17 seconds of fuel remaining. 